All right, so uh, I'm getting started on this uh, uh, dash cover. And the first thing I have to do before I forget to do it um, is we have this little sensor that sits up in the dashboard that um, turns your lights on automatically as it goes dusk. And so this has got to be located in the top of the dash. Um, it's in the forward section of the uh, Challenger dash in the plastic section, uh, which is kind of nice because it's a separate piece. It's removable and you can unplug it very easily. This one uh, I'm going to have to put in this piece, which means I'm going to have to fish around in there and plug it in before I set the dash in place. Anyway, I was puzzling around trying to figure out how the heck I was going to um, create a, a nice, neat circular hole in, in the top of this uh, vinyl padded dash cover and I had a piece of scrap here and what I ended up trying out a couple of uh, sample uh, times here uh, is basically taking a piece of one inch tubing and which is the diameter the outside diameter of that uh, piece and sharpening it up um, on the edge just a bit um, and then heating it up with a torch and then just making a light impression into the vinyl just enough to create a guide for this exacto knife anybody who's ever tried to cut a circle with an exacto knife knows that uh, it's pretty horrific when you're done so i needed something that was going to be consistent and so i'm getting ready to cut that out now in other words there's a piece of vinyl here and uh, then underneath of it, there's a, a bit of foam, as you can see here. And I'll paint that all out black, but then I'll drill the bottom hole and attach that sensor from the bottom side of the dashboard. Anyway, just thought I'd show you that um, before I move on to something else. Okay, so this is the first rough bit of the dash pad. Um, it's just sitting in there loose. And I've got to bring all of this down. Um, I've got to tie back some of the wires because it's causing some interference. But um, this is uh, nothing more than a tr trial fit of pulling it in and out. Problem is, is uh, lots of this is so fragile on the ends. It's uh, you know it's easily broken on the ends, which I don't even worry about it at this point because I'll just have to re fortify it once I get the rest of this in because I have to get the general shape there's some interference top of my ductwork over there I thought would be uh, uh, a problem when I was looking at it and I said well no it's as low as the uh, the uh, Challenger uh, ductwork would be in that location but um, you know the Challenger is three inches higher bottom line and this thing goes straight out to this Point here so as you can see it's just sitting there and loose yeah that's fine but we've got to draw this thing down closer to the actual windshield bed over here which is it's pretty nice all the way till you get to the middle and then it starts ramping up because it's hitting hard on that one duct that feeds that one top vent over there so uh, gonna have to see what I can do about that all right, I just wanted to show you this is the part of the duct that's giving me the interference. So I'm going to have to I'm going to have to modify this and make it a whole lot shallower than it is right now and sweep it in a whole lot quicker than I have here. This is coming out too abruptly here because this this point here is not allowing me to drop this down as you can see right here. I put my hand right on it. I figured it would be a big problem, um, but I just wanted to see for myself just how much of a problem it was before I went and made the adjustment. The other thing I want to mention is, is my friend Kurt Simmons, who uh, showed me this uh, setup for how he uh, did his wipers as far as using one tab and one rod that's adjustable. Um, he called me out after looking at my uh, last video and asked me if I had checked to see. Uh, you know, I have flat plates with a smaller opening uh, over the defrosters to see uh, to reduce down the opening in order for it to not interfere with the wipers any rate, um, he said, mentioned that, you know, do the duct doors, the flaps that open up, do they come up and, and uh, interrupt those uh, flat plates? So 
kind of panicky, but I checked it and uh, I ran it through its cycle and opened the doors and everything uh, clears fine. Uh, where that appears, it would be a problem is these ducts here, which are much larger at the bottom, the doors when they open, the flap doors are, are sticking up beyond the foam on the top of this box here, this air conditioning box. So in this area here though, they're in quite deeper, they're a smaller door and they just lift up very gently um, and they don't interrupt those flat plates. So that was a concern that he had. He called me out and I'm thankful for that um, because um, it would have been a heck of a thing if those uh, doors were uh, binding up against the bottom of my ductwork. Anyway, just uh, thought I'd fill you in on all that nonsense. All right, uh, in addition to modifying that uh, ductwork in this area, what I've gone and done is I've, I'm in the process of there's some stiffening elements here in the plastic. You can see that's a large profile and some large things sticking up here. Um, so I'm going to go and I'm going to go through here and I'm clearing all of this out. It's, um, it's about uh, three-eighths of an inch more clearance uh, to get rid of this stuff uh, in the area where those ducts are crossing over. Um, and uh, hopefully it'll help me uh, roll this down a little bit closer. Um, but anyway, I wanted to just show you that before it's all gone. But um, you can see that this material was just like this over here. And it was hitting hard on that other duct. All right, so that's a little fancier looking right there. Um, so that's, that corner's swept around a little bit better. It's lowered um, so that now, you know, if I have to draw this down from this point here, which obviously this is, has to stay there, that's the height of that. So I, I've got a pretty straight line here. Uh, going across there it allows me to pull that uh, front of the dash down as much as possible. I also took the opportunity to uh, pull this corner down a little bit, roll this down into this area. Hopefully this is not an interference point right here, but I don't think it is. Um, anyway, um, I got to go over there and uh, clear out some more of that plastic on the bottom side. Got another row of these that, uh, while I had the duct out, I laid it in here to see uh, if there was uh, any other interference. So I've got another row of these to take out of here. And so this is all just one layer thick now. It's just, uh, you know, 16th of an inch plastic here. Anyway, uh, moving on. All right, I've got this thing temporarily just screwed down with three screws in the front. To the height that uh, obviously we wanted, we wanted to sit right down uh, at the window bed level. Now that puts it in kind of a bind because uh, it doesn't want to go in that direction, and that it wants to go straight out. So I'm pulling this down in order to get it to there. So it's a bit of a struggle because then it wants to rock up in the in the front here. So you got to kind of secure it at the front in a couple of spots, make sure it's in the right spot, and then it's got to be uh, folded down gently starting in the center and then out to the ends but uh and then there's a lot of back and forth of letting it out and cutting more relief cuts for here making sure that clears again these are a little rough but they'll be covered up so um anyway uh the next thing i have to do is uh i have to shape this front edge of this uh, foam and this plastic and this vinyl to match the angle of the windshield. What I'll do is I'll basically just have it, leave it screwed down here and come in and I'll shave this edge here until it's going down in the, in the same direction so that the windshield doesn't uh, interfere with it. Um, and then I'm gonna have to come up with some sort of a capture for the front edge of this uh, so this can be tucked in, which will be tricky uh, because if you ever have to take it back out, you know, you're going to have to try and uh, fish it back in to a uh, capture in the front in addition to working it around all of this jazz here. Uh, like I said, I'd have much preferred to have this section um, a standalone and then uh, have a, a fabricated section up here to take in all the, uh, the duct work and everything in the front. But um, I don't know. Uh, that's easy to do when you've got uh, a dashboard that's completely blown up, but this one looks really nice. So uh, I'm going to 
struggle along and try to get this to look like one piece <clears throat> if it's impractical in the end i always have the other option of uh taking uh, some of this material out and putting a larger piece in the front all right just uh sneaking up on this thing so uh what i've done now is is i've uh cleared out this foam down to the bottom layer of plastic that is the actual dash uh, uh, substructure and I've screwed it down to the top uh, where the windshield the windshield comes in at this angle right here now I've just back beveled this for the time being uh, like I said I'm sneaking up on this but this will all have to be drawn back further because the way the rubber gasket comes in here for the windshield is it lays in this groove and then it comes up flat over top um, now in a regular stock uh, dodge charger 68 charger or 70 charger or whatever there's some bolts uh, that go through straight down here to secure the metal dash um, into the car uh, the only problem is is that you, you can't get the dashboard out uh, without uh, taking the windshield out of those cars unfortunately we don't have that option here because we've got to be able to take this dash pad out in case there's any issues underneath the dashboard um, you know even trying to take it out the way it's supposed to come out by taking the entire sub dash out you'd still be hooked in up here if i uh, use that method so basically i've got to sneak up on it create a rim that will retain this front end that can be unscrewed from inside the car just one little bit more of a, a complication, but uh, sneaking up on it, like I said, um, don't want to get too far ahead of myself and cut too much out of this. Okay, I think I've gone far enough, as far as I dare to, with this uh, mock-up cow. Um, I'm getting pretty close to what I need as far as the final trim on all of this stuff, so I need to get back uh, and complete this cow area here, get the vent uh made that seals up the underneath side of the cow and get going with that you can see where the dash how the dash wants to ride it wants to ride this much higher so i mean that's how much we're bringing it down in the front to try and roll it down into this old uh, car's dashboard um, bed anyway um i took a little piece of uh, metal like this and bent it up to the angle while I had this in here and set it right in here to the angle of the windshield and rode along here like this with and trimmed with my knife and this is this is basically with the rubber seal in here it has a little rubber flap that covers over the fasteners in the uh, 68 charger or 60 or 69 70 charger top dash has some bolts in the top here and there's a little rubber flap that uh, comes over top here, so um, hopefully I'll be able to use the same uh, rubber flap to cover up my fasteners, but I'm going to have to uh, come in and create some angle um, areas like this one here that I can screw to so that I can come in with screws or bolts from the angle of the windshield in this direction. Now you have to just lip, hopefully just lift the rubber flap to get to the fasteners if you need to. We'll see how that works out, but before I can get to that, I've, I've got to stop and uh, make sure because these stampings are never 100% the same and if I have any issues with the new one I don't want it to translate to the dashboard as I see it right now all right so I've got this uh, temporarily screwed down uh, in its location um, I had to trim it all out obviously get rid of the excess and um, I went ahead and put temporary uh, fasteners in here also to hold these uh, little uh, transitional pieces in on both sides here. Um, this side over here, of course, I had to allow space under here for the ducting that'll come out that will feed air into here or feed air through there down into here, which is the fresh air vent. Um, also, I had to keep in mind that uh, we're much narrower because of our fenders. Our fenders are way wider and our hood is much narrower. so made sure that the ducting opening would be uh, somewhere as well within where the fenders end over here. So uh, the next thing I'm going to have to try and hoist the hood up here, make sure that I have uh, no problems matching the back arc of the uh, hood to this cowl before I um, say that these are permanent pieces here. And then I'll take the whole mess off 
and uh, follow up from there. Okay, so uh, I threw the hood up there, and it was quite a bit different as far as the arc was concerned. It had way more curvature side to side than this cowl did. So I can only assume that when I trimmed this cowl off that, they, uh, that it lost some of its shape. Uh, the only thing is, is trying to maneuver that heavy hood uh, was a real pain. Fortunately for me, I saved this. This is a cradle that I had uh, made for when I built my Daytona. Uh, I wanted to take all of the reinforcement out of the back of the uh, hood and remake a, a lower profile reinforcement. Uh, which was uh, meant I had to try to hold the shape of the hood to its stock. So before I cut out that reinforcement, I built this cradle so that the, I could lay the hood down, upside down in it, and work on it that way, and it wouldn't lose its shape. So fortunately for me, I had this rear profile, which uh, tells me the exact shape of the curvature of the hood should be. And um, needless to say, I had to raise it almost uh, about a half an inch, so I'll have to remake these pieces over here. But, uh, you know, you never, assume, never assume you're in uh, good shape. You know, just keep checking back and forth with different parts because you get too far down the line and then you're committed. You'll be cutting a lot of stuff back loose. All right, I ended up letting this down about another, back, back down about a quarter of an inch here. I had it blocked up to a half of an inch to meet that arc. Um, but that's a little bit too, was a little bit too much shape. And what it was, was picking up the front end over here so that it was going uphill relative to this template that I made, as you'll remember, uh, in one of the early episodes, uh, off the car before I took, uh, cut the body loose from its original chassis. So, uh, this was the profile of the hood as it related to the roof as it related to the cow. So this tells me where the cow needs to plane off at. All right, with the cow back off the car, um, I went ahead and I trimmed these up and stepped them and put them on the back side, the step on the back side, and then welded them up so that it's, this panel is flush now. It's not overlaid like it was when I was had them on there temporary with the screws. Um, and I filled this in a little bit on the top side here also over top of the box that conceals the uh, windshield wiper motor. Anyway, the, my challenge now is to build a duct that takes the air from this center grill, okay, and then sweeps it around so that it dumps out in the fresh air box that's on the passenger side of the car. It's a bit of a challenge, uh, real confined space. A number of things are going on here that I've taken into consideration. The biggest is that you don't want water to collect in this, this plenum, in this box. You don't want it just sitting in the box. So you got to make sure that it's sloped off, that it drains out uh, in this area here. So initially what I'm starting with is the back wall, which is the closest to the windshield bed, which is kind of hard to see because it's upside down and backwards. What's happening here is this has a roll in this direction, so it rolls up in the center. So if I was just to make a box that followed this grill work, um, this side of the box, which doesn't point towards the opening over here, would start to collect up water, because obviously the box is shaped like a cup, um, with this being the lowest point over here. So uh, from the center out, I have to make sure, well this one here, actually all I have to do is follow the curvature because it's, if, you, if you're looking uh, from the hood at the windshield, you know, it would be curving over like this, okay, in both directions. And what we want is from the center line here, we want the water to roll down and out into the box uh, that uh, lets the cold air in. On the opposite side, it would want to roll off this way, but we, we would trap the water here. So what we have to do is, is from the center point over, we have to go level, or better yet, if we can go uphill, that'll be uh, even better yet. That'll be my objective. Problem is, is depending on the, the, the arc, I have it tapered down to almost nothing over here, like a quarter of an inch, in order to flatten it out, and then it starts to roll in order to let the floor taper down uh, and let the water drain out. 
So this is going to be a bit of a trial and error, like everything else in this area. So I'll just lightly tack this in, build this plenum uh, in a kind of a mock-up form, and put it all on and uh, see what see what happens. Um, I'll drop some oil in there or something, see if it pulls up on one side or the other. Anyway, in the center here of the challenge has got to be that I've got to build a wall in this very tight area here so that I, this is isolated to this side. This is the uh, the one opening for the uh, windshield wiper stud. The other one's not a problem, it's way over there. So, uh, and plus this whole thing has to be shallow enough that it doesn't interrupt this box that I used to cover the uh, windshield wiper motor. Lots of challenges. Now, you can see also it curves in this direction, right this way. And the bottom curves this way, and then it comes up, and this is a compound curve going in this direction, and then slightly up this way as this panel. So you're basically making a pretty serpentine shape here to create just this one wall here, trying to keep everything as vertical as possible along the way. Anyway, I just thought I'd show you that. All right, might be a little hard to see, but this is version one. Um, I've got everything just tacked together in a couple places because this has to come out, has to be painted, has to be sealed, all of that good stuff once I figure out if this is going to work. Like I said, this is version one. i got to do a test fit. Um, swear the air. Hopefully it'll come in and then turn the corner and come out into the cold air box. You can see I've got it walled around here to uh, clear the uh, pivot point for the wipers. Um, and also it's flat here and then it starts to arc over here. So let's see how that all works out and um, let's see if we're doing a little chop and cut, probably. That's the way these things go. All right, well, that seems to um, miss all the vitals. Uh, so the next step is to try and finish up the intake uh, area of this. Hopefully there won't be any interruption there. Okay, this is my first attempt at the exhaust chute. Um, there's that little doghouse that covers that um, bracket for the um, heater fan uh, that sticks up in this one little area. It's right in this area right here. I might have to end up cutting a relief in this panel right here, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. It's, it's tapered down to nothing over here, so maybe I'll just miss it by the skin of my teeth. All right, moving on. All right, <clears throat> so... Uh, that's how that all looks. Uh, you can see this is the uh, the bottom of that plenum uh, as the air should be, turn this corner and exhaust out into this box right here. A cover has to be made for this box, but before that all can be done, you know, the, the uh, inner structure of the hood has to be hung with hinges. Make sure where I'm, I'm going to have to clear out for over here to attach those hinges because remember the fenders are way in here. And if you got to put a cover on this thing, if you ever want to take this filter out, you got to make sure you're clear of all of that stuff. Um, anyway, I don't even have a filter in my car. It didn't come with one, but that's neither here nor there. There's one in this car. It'd be nice to be able to uh, change it. And uh, that's the box. It slides under uh, fine and it locks into place. So, um, anyways, time to take it back apart, take the plenum out. Weld it all up, uh, seal it all up, paint it, all that good stuff. Uh, all of that has to happen before I can permanently attach it to the bottom of this cowl, and then I can install the cowl on the car and proceed with the dashboard. All right, so this is what this uh, plenum looks like out, out from underneath the cowl. Um, I just got done uh, running seam sealer all along the inside edge of this to seal it up and make it a uh, watertight bathtub, so we'll let that dry before we paint it up uh, and get it ready to install for the last time on the bottom side of the cowl. Anyway, I thought you'd like to see that because it's not going to get seen again. You know, as a kid, I used to hate it when my dad told me I had to do something like right now. Uh, I still buck at that idea, but uh, some things just have to be done right now. Um, as I was pulling this over 
uh, and trying to get this worked in here you know there's so much tension because I'm trying to roll this down where it doesn't want to go you know I thought about putting a cut on the bottom of the plastic but then if it folded and I saw a crease here I'd be devastated so and then I thought well maybe I can heat it up and relax the plastic and I'm thinking to myself yeah and then all of a sudden you get a bubble in the vinyl and you're done so anyway so I'm just gonna leave it alone and pull it down manually like this uh, there's a little bit of tension in that but what happens is is that as you're trying to pull it down this uh, the dashboard keeps wanting to shift uh, you know away from its proper location so I didn't want to have to deal with these side closers just now but I need them to kind of lock the sides of this dashboard in uh, to keep it from shift shuffling around even though I've got some screws in the front this things all plastic underneath and if you put a little tension in it it wants to wiggle around so I've got these uh, I made a 5 8 inch um, a channel here that uh, breaks over and comes out um, and then I cut it flush with this surface here and now I'm getting ready to make a plate that'll go on here and then I'll just fasten this uh, to this inner flange here and then this over here I'll put some fasteners in here uh, screws probably that'll uh, lock the side of this dashboard into location on both sides so another little detour um, uh, but uh, it has to be done right now otherwise it's going to mess up everything uh, if I don't lock this uh, dashboard into place a little bit more secure just thought I'd show you what it looks like unvarnished uh, so you can see what's going on here because uh, you know this bulges out into this area so this has to step back uh, and then it fades out and then this protrudes so what I did was I took this uh, piece of metal shaped it here and then I cut it off to the profile of this face until it faded out uh, then I got a piece of I guess it's about 60 60 or 70 thousandths so it's nice and stiff it won't have a ripply edge here uh, and um, I twisted it and shaped it until it fit this contour because there's a little bulge here and then uh, down over the side when I got down to here instead of doing it this this step in reverse here I just took the metal and I twisted it out a little bit like this right here and so it's attached here and it kind of goes at an angle to this part here to kind of make this closure now later on I'll take this off and uh, clean it all up and paint it and uh, I've got some just regular flush uh, screws here this one here has a little bit of a flange on it um, but uh, yeah so I'll just be painted out black Anyway, got to do that on the other side now. Hold this thing in. All right. Um, I got a little tired of struggling with the dash. Uh, for now, anyway. Um, I got to retreat from that a little bit and do a little bit more thinking on what I want, how I want to get that to work. Um, anyway, part of that uh, process is also getting this cowl on. So I went ahead yesterday and I painted out the uh, interior of the uh, ductwork and uh, I just turned it upside down and welded it to the inside of the cowl and just went around it and seam sealed it all the way around the perimeter so it's seam sealed on the inside on the bottom of this pan and now on the outside it's sealed to the cowl itself anyway I went ahead and I drilled out the spot welds holes here and um, also I went ahead and just did a little preliminary body work on this uh, where I added that flange there to kind of smooth that over a little bit so I don't have to do all of that hanging over the the uh, the uh, engine bay anyway um, getting ready to put this on here hopefully for the final time once I get that uh, that bottom duct work uh, painted out All right, sometimes you got to back up to go forward. Um, so that idea that I had with the little uh, screws going in an angle, uh, that's not going to work. Just wasn't strong enough with just three hold downs uh, to pull down these corners. These corners are really stout. They really don't want to go anywhere. So in order for it to match the arc, uh, I have to have something a lot stronger. So I'm going to have to, um, I'm going to have to basically just create a, a steel capture 
here that that the dashboard's going to have to tuck under uh, instead of having some something that could be unscrewed. It's just going to be a rim, and the rim will be wide enough to uh, take in the defroster ducts, and also it'll be wide enough to take in any problems that I have with the defroster ducts cutting into this rise over here. So. I'll have to customize the entire capture here. So it's a bit of a uh, more involved situation that I wanted to get into, but the other, the other method, it was just, uh, it was looking too uh, horsey and it wasn't gonna be strong enough to keep these corners down. The last thing you wanna do is get it all done and have that thing, these things springing up into the windshield where you can't get to them. Anyway, like I said, uh, plan B underway. All right, I'm starting to work out where the finish uh, vents are going to go for the defrosters. And you can see what I was talking about as far as how they get into this area here. So I'm going to have to, this, this receiver plate here that's going to end up with these, these are representing what that receiver plate will look like eventually. Um, it's going to have to come along here pretty wide and be shaped up over top here like this. And it'll have to have a vertical wall to go down in this direction also to accommodate this uh, duct outlet over here. But uh, you can see what I'm dealing with there. And uh, that one over there just needs a little more clearance here and there. I just piddle in with that, try to take my mind off of uh, just how I'm going to go about trying to get this back in here because these are tight. Like I say, when I pull these down, this is really tight in the corners. And uh, once I pull this back out after I get this all constructed, hopefully I can get it fished back in there. Anyway, that's where I'm at with this. Oh, by the way, just so you know, um, I had a whole bunch of footage of me trying to engineer uh, these forward connectors uh, through the dashboard. You see these little slots here. These were meant to, uh, they were going to be on an angle like that. They were welded in, and what they are is just a T-nut that has threads in it. And in the bottom, there's a 1032 nut. And there was three of them across the dash. And what I was going to do is I had these, these tabs welded to the base of the windshield bed on the inside. These tubes came up at an angle to match the dashboard top. And then I had a rim that went around from end to end that I was going to weld to these. That way you'd have this removable rim that you could take off and release the dashboard. But these were just not strong enough. They were kept bending up. And uh, that told me that... <clears throat> they weren't going to be strong enough to pull down these corners here. As you can see, I'm uh, struggling keeping them down right now. So uh, I cut them all out and eliminated that footage. Uh, it was just me spinning my wheels, so nothing interesting to see there. Uh, just want to let you know what that was about. All right. So I had this cowl on for one last fit um, because I had added some... Uh, just a little bit of sound deadener, a real thin layer of sound deadener, less about a sixteenth of an inch. But still, you know, be clearances being what they are. <clears throat> I want to make sure that I uh, was uh, clear of everything that I had underneath there. And um, anyways, uh, that's to keep this thing from buzzing and rattling since it's a large unsupported piece of sheet metal right there. Um, also, what I had to do is uh, the holes on this cowl were drilled a little bit down and off to the left here as it relates to the way I'm standing here in front of it right now you can see that it's closer on this side and I had to take the die grinder and kind of widen it out a little bit here because there's a little foam seal that goes around the windshield wiper stud and uh, there just wasn't any room over here to actually squeeze that into place so I took the opportunity to mark it out and since I was going to take it off one more time and get those things dogged out a little bit better so that I'll be able to put those seals in. Okay, happy day. I got the cowl in. It's in permanently now. It's welded. Spot welded all the way up through here. Um, welded around the corners. We're welded to the substructure. Um, we've got it uh, painted on the bottom, the engine compartment side of it. Um, that little gray stripes out will sleeve from the, it'll be body color up from there on. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that's, uh, that was a lot of work to get to that point, but, um, we made it. And, uh, so anyway, 
that's going to be it for this week, and uh, I appreciate you uh, watching. Thanks.